Let's welcome on board Amit Chadda, the MD and CEO at L&T Technology Services as well. Uh, Amit, hi, good to have you on the show. It's uh, kind of a glass half full, glass half empty kind of performance from you in the second quarter. Miss and margins, despite robust top line growth. Uh, tell us what led to this miss on margins. First of all, let me start by saying there is no margin miss. And let me explain. So as we started the year, we told you that we were getting worried that are we getting outdated in terms of technology? Are we making enough investments in sales? Are we covering all the ground? Are we not? And the answer came back to us that we needed to make some investments. And we had then guided our analysts that for the H1 period, which is Q1 plus Q2, our margins will be lower and they will improve in the end, ending up in the full year in the 16% EBIT levels. I would like to reconfirm my guidance for revenue for 8 to 10% growth and my margin guidance or margin aspiration of 16% EBIT levels. That basically means that the investments that we made during the quarter one and quarter two will start to pay off and taper off because some of those were one-time investments being made like license fee, uh, procuring uh, a compute capacity for AI, etc. And we believe that those will not carry forward into H2. And we know they will not carry forward into H2. We do see <clears throat> uh, revenue growth continuing to happen, and that will directly have a positive impact on the margins. And therefore, we are fairly comfortable that this planned exercise, uh, uh, from here on, you will see improvements as we move forward. <clears throat> not just that, I would like to share with you that in terms of <clears throat> our growth, uh, we've had secular growth. Uh, sustainability grow, grew at 6.5%, mobility at 5%, and the back of 6% last quarter, and tech at about 1%. As I look at next quarter, I can definitely see growth coming up in sustainability as well as tech, while in mobility, I have right now said muted, but overall, I'm not changing guidance. I'm fairly comfortable where we are right now. Okay, point taken. But how do you plan to claw back to 16% mark? And you're talking about the full year number here and not just the exit rate because the first half has been sub 15.5%. Uh, you'll uh, appreciate me asking you that because there are wage hikes impending too in the second half. Yes, yes. So there's, there's, a, there's a couple, three things. Number one, uh, uh, right sizing of the pyramid uh, will kick in. There will be a certain degree of improved utilization. There will be uh, and billing uh, across the globe, and we've been working on these uh, parameters. There's uh, there's uh, there's some rate hikes planned uh, that will kick in as well in quarter three and then quarter four, uh, and then in addition to that, there is some license revenue that should come in based on the three products that we have launched uh, about a month ago or widgets we have launched. We have got a little bit of revenue from that in the current quarter, but we expect in quarter three and quarter four for those also to come in. So given all these levers that we have got and the fact that some of the investments that we made were one-off and some were continuing, the one-off investments will fall off and provide us the ability to improve our uh, operating margin as we move forward. This is all part of a planned exercise of the year. Of course, we got to execute on it, but uh, we are working towards it as we speak. Right. So last time we spoke about you, you spoke about, you know, acquisitions in the second half of the fiscal. Uh, what's the update there? It is still on track. Uh, it's, a, you know, like you said, half full, half uh, uh, empty. I'll say tale of two cities. So we've been working at it. We still are looking at their active uh, uh, targets in uh, the tech space in California. There is uh, MedTech in the U.S., a couple of assets in automotive in Germany, and we continue to engage with them, talk to them, take it forward. Let's see which one of them closes first. Okay, so you're on track with some of those acquisition targets, but um, are you then maintaining that $1.5 billion revenue run rate target that you had set for FI25 as well? Yes, because that uh, did include, if you ask me, uh, uh, an acquisition uh, so yes, we still that aspiration. So three. Now let me help you here. Uh, long term aspiration: three billion dollar segments, and this got blessed by the board as well as our leaders, our employees. Medium outlook: two billion dollars, seventeen to eighteen percent EBIT, and near term: eight to ten percent uh, revenue growth and sixteen percent level, sixteen percent levels EBIT margin. 
uh, as well as uh, uh, the 1.5 billion revenue run rate aspiration remains. Right. And this 8 to 10 percent FI25 guidance, is, this, is it going to be all organic or uh, some of it inorganic as well? No, 8 to 10 is purely organic. Uh, you know, headlines from the auto sector in Europe is, in specific haven't been quite good. Uh, what's been your reading of the environment? So, auto in Europe, see again, tale of two cities. OEMs are doing, uh, are, are sticking to design cycles. OEMs are sticking to getting superior products in the marketplace. I, in fact, complement the leadership of the OEMs in terms of thinking ahead around software-defined vehicles and investing in the such. Uh, AI driven, uh, AI uh, generated, uh, Gen AI generated uh, 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 driver experience, right? And others. I compliment them for thinking ahead, thinking about model year 28, model year 29, model year 30, and onwards. And that continues. Uh, there is stress in the tier ones because some of the work that was being done by the tier ones is no longer required. Other pieces that were required are being done by, by the OEMs and people like ourselves. So there is a little bit of stress there. Um, uh, the fortunate part for LTTS is that for about, about three years ago, we started investing in our relationships with OEMs in automotive as well as trucks and off-highway. And I'm happy to share the tier one relationships today generate lesser amount of revenues for us than they did three years ago. Uh, but we, we love all our customers. We respect the confidence they have in us and we continue to work with them. Okay, but what about the overall demand environment? How would you rate that now versus, let's say, three months ago? So number one, the conversations we are having around Gen AI and AI today is different from three months, four months ago. Where three months, four months ago, there was a lot of excitement around what could happen. The projects that we have started executing and the POCs and work we are executing now is meeting, getting the reality uh, uh, along with you know what the aspiration was. So uh, there is that part that's happening to be seen. But Gen AI and AI is not going anywhere, only expanding. Uh, the compute required, and it's also not just data, it's data, software, hardware, all three, compute and storage. And we've been working in all four areas. We are working to actually sign a partnership in the next few weeks uh, with a significant technology player uh, in an area. So we continue to work in that area. We, in fact, filed more than 160 patents for Gen AI, AI cumulatively right up to the end of September. And this number was, I guess, about 120 or 130 last quarter. I don't have the number, uh, uh, but I think it was about 125, 130 uh, last quarter. So we've been able to make some progress. Okay, lastly, for that 8 to 10% uh, revenue guidance, the CQGR for the next two quarters is 4.4 on the lower end and 6.5 in the upper end. You've been doing around 3% in this quarter. First quarter, of course, was a decline. Given all of this, what's the probability, Amit, that you're going to miss your guidance even on the lower end? I would right now like to say 0%. Uh, see, uh, we did about 4% this quarter, right? And uh, this is in line with what we had thought about. We, of course, uh, a, a significant part of our guidance <clears throat> is already one, but there is a part of the guidance that will play out in, in quarter three and quarter four. And uh, we continue to work across uh, geographies, clients, uh, technology areas to see that we meet this. Uh, we'll, of course, see you again in January. By the time we end the quarter, we'll have a lot more clarity because by that time, you know, three quarters are played out. Uh, but I definitely feel the CY25 will be a lot better than CY24. Right, Mr. Shada, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us today. There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits. And then, break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to rise.